Hello and welcome to the Basketball Show. I'm Nathan Strimple. We're usually joined by Shane the Hammer Hill, hard man to replace, but who else to replace him but the doyen of basketball media in Australia, Steve, Mr. Magic Carfino. Steve, great to have you here. Man, I love being on this show. It's so much fun. You get to talk hoops, you get to wear the gear. I couldn't think of a better place. Looking very sharp too as well. As we get going, oh, as always, a big thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to Unibet. Also, thank you to Alcatel, Christmas approaching, get around their mobile phones. Thank you to uh, the Daily Telegraph and all of their media partners all around Australia under the News Corp banner. And also right here in the throwback store, anything basketball you need is right here. But as we get underway, we need to add a new segment because the fact you're here means we need to kick it off with Carfino's Call. All right, well, this is just something that really irritates me when I'm watching an NBA game, NBL game, even like an under 18, under 16, under 14 game. It's fundamentals. The lack of fundamentals that are in the game today just blows me away. I cannot believe it. I shouldn't even say lack of fundamentals. Sometimes it's absolutely no fundamentals. Let's go on something that's as simple as blocking out. Shot goes up. I've seen guys not block out the shooter. Nathan shoots it. I watch the flight of the ball. Nathan runs in front of me, gets rebounding position, tip in. As a matter of fact, I was watching the Sydney Kings play, and I hate to single you out here, Kevin Lish, but you should know better. Your dad is a coach. The shot goes up. You watch the flight of the ball. Mitch McCarron tips it in. Game winner. I'm sure you lost a lot of sleep over that one. As you should. At least it matters to Kevin Lish. I watch NBA games. You see some great tip jams from some great, long, athletic guys. And the reason is, guys are watching the flight of the ball. And then, Anthony Davis strolls past somebody who could just stick his butt into him and get a block out. And no, it's a massive jam. And it's on SportsCenter for the rest of the year. Maybe the rest of your life. Well, there you go, kids watching. We are off and away, Shane. Your job might be in jeopardy here with Steve on a roll. Uh, I like that. The fundamentals of kids watching at home. Only one person ever dunked on me because I wasn't very good. I wasn't very athletic, but I made sure I did the fundamentals. His name was Joe Ingalls. His career worked out all right. So uh, fundamentals at home, kids. That is Carfino's call. Well, usually we jump into a segment now we call Under the Hammer, and this is Shane's hammer. But he also usually says that men over 40 shouldn't wear a jersey without a t-shirt underneath. But you're pulling off pretty well, Steve. So I don't see Shane here right now. We've got the hammers right here. Don't need that little artificial one. we got the real deal right here. But I will be dropping the hammer on some New Zealand players. They only scored six points in the third quarter. That's got to be some kind of an NBL record, isn't it? Second lowest quarter score ever for the breakers. That's just crazy. With all the professionalism, let's get right into it. The guards, the, tri- the trio of guards, thank goodness for weeks, for weeks he, he shot and played a great game. But his other three teammate guards, Corey Webster, 0 for 9. Patrick Rashad, 0 for 6. Shaley, 1 for 6. He's the only dude who made a shot. They were 1 for 21 from the field. You know how hard that is to do? Have you ever been the shooter in a rebounding drill? You're trying to hit the rim, but you're trying to miss? You would make more than one out of 21. You'd make probably by four or five. Mm, yeah, I, I like that you've worked your shout out. 7, 11, 19 kind of saved him there. Still lost the game though. And instead of under the hammer, I think it's the New Zealand breakers backcourt. You are in the cannon. Well, we're just coming out of under the hammer in the cannon. I'm just going to give a little hammer on myself. Uh, usually when someone goes zero for something, we do a segment here. I don't know if you know the real Steve. It's, we do a donut. Hey, Director Dave, not seeing any donuts. No Olympians in the house, so we get no donuts. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe Shane ate them all. But uh, I was due for two donuts, so I was a bit excited when uh, Corey and Patrick Richard went over, but that's okay. We move on. And it's time for the stroke of the week. So out of the negative and the uh, in the canon, a little positive. Who are you stroking this week, Steve? Well, let's get right into the positive. I'm going to talk about the Illawarra Hawks. No one expected, especially Shane Hill, expected the Illawarra Hawks to come out and play the way that they've played. They are down in personnel as far as high-priced players. They are down with players. They lose two very instrumental players from their lineup in Mitch Norton and Nick Kay going over to Perth. They lost heaps. They were able to get young guys in. They were able to get Todd Blanchfield. They did a great job of recruiting. Shane doesn't think so, but these guys are molding together. They're playing with a chip on their shoulder. They've done a great job. I love the way that Rob Beveridge is bringing Jordi Jett off the bench 
And he, who the hell's who, who else? Made a little about? change, Jordy J and Tim Conrad. And Tim Conrad. You know, how can I forget that? He's like 6'6", can score, can defend. He's very good. And they're getting that punch off the bench. They're playing some good basketball. Yeah, two two road, two road games, two road wins on the weekend. Conrad 4-4 four four on the triple. And how's Jordan Jett? Just two little how do you do's the last couple of games against Adelaide. Comes out, hits the game win, and then just gives the little wave to the fans. Oh, he's been special against Adelaide when they beat those guys in Wollongong. He did a great job. I think he's listening to Shane, she- Shane Hill because he's taken that jump shot, that three-point shot. He's put it in his pocket, and he's getting to the rim. And the brother is big. He's coming in like a Mack truck. As a matter of fact, he looks like a bowling ball that can dribble, knock stuff out of the way, and scores. I don't want to get in his way, put it that way. And this week, the Illawarra Hawks, and particularly George Jet, you're getting stroked. We move on to the Alcatel Superstar. And this week, they actually are superstars. You send us in your vision. Our friends at Alcatel have got a phone. But this week, we're honouring the Australian Indigenous All-Stars team, celebrating people and culture and our culture as Australians. This team's done us proud, Steve. You see a few highlights of their tour here. They beat the Maori team two to one. But some actual superstars on that team as you watch some of the highlights of their tour, Steve. I know. They got some legit players, some guys that made a mark in the NBL. The Cedar Brothers, you know, Michael and Chris, Tyson Demar. Of course, you know, I knew his father. We lived down in Wollongong. So, you know, I, I know they have a very proud heritage. And, you know, these are some great players. You know, Chris Patton, who played with Cans. He's a big, he's not just a big making up the numbers. You know, he's a go-to guy that can can really play the game. And Deva George, you know, remember him in the dunk contest? And a guy's about five foot nine, five foot ten, can dunk. So, and, uh, and very flamboyant and a great player. Plays like a lot of street ball, kind of like an aboriginal Alan Iverson. Yeah, I like it. It's great to see them honouring people and culture and doing us well, sorry, doing us proud out there. And also the Illawarra Hawks this season having an Indigenous heritage round. So that's going to be one to watch too. Those jerseys look great down in Illawarra. So this week, the Alcatel superstar is the Australian Indigenous team. We move now into the Unibet game preview. Thanks to our friends at Unibet and a cracking round of games coming out this weekend. Let's start off with the NBL, Steve, okay, with your you call. Set them up, I line them down, and boom, knock them down. There you go. Perth Wildcats okay. lost in Sydney against the Kings. Now the Kings travel to Perth, Perth hosting Sydney. Okay, uh, Sydney Kings going to get a little shot of reality. Bang, Sydney Kings go down to the Perth Wildcats. Sydney are very good, it's going to be close. I'm going to keep it within 1 and 10. 1 to 10, Perth. Now, Brisbane. Now, we are filming on a Monday. We don't know the result between Brisbane and Melbourne on a Monday night, but Brisbane hosting Adelaide. Oh, man. Adelaide has got to bounce back. But you know what? Brisbane have got to solidify that great form at home. I'm going to go with the Bullets. 1 to 10. I'm going to stay right in there. All going to be close this week. Fair enough. Lamar Patterson absolutely flying in that game in Brisbane when they took down United. Now, this is big. New South Wales rivalry, Sydney traveling down the road. They've already played in Perth. Now they play in Illawarra. I know. Sydney are a different team than the other Sydney Ting, Sydney, Sydney Tings, Sydney Kings teams that used to travel down to the gong on the Princess Highway. Sydney Kings, 11 plus in the gong. I'm calling it big. They won't be singing that song to me anymore like, we love you because you're from Wollongong. Sydney Kings. <laughs> Sydney Kings, 11 plus in that one. Now, this is a must-win game for both sides. Cairns have lost nine in a row. New Zealand have lost five in a row. New Zealand travelling to Cairns on the Sunday afternoon. I know. Well, I think Cairns had the opportunity to win some games early in the season. They've lost their confidence. New Zealand, this one's too big for them. They're going to get them. One to ten. New Zealand? New one Zealand. to ten. New Zealand, one to ten. Uh, I'm going to challenge on that one. Steve won't be back next week to get poked. I am poking Shane. But I'm going to say Cairns get that one done. I think that's the one... It's now or never for the Cairns. They're going to find a way. Cam Chagas says that every week. No, no. I, yeah. I reckon Cairns have got that one. He's got to live there, though. <laughs> i got to call the game on Sunday <laughs> afternoon there, too. I think it'll be close, too, but I'm going to go Cairns 1-10. to 10. Finally, Melbourne hosting Perth, and this will be on Melbourne lost in that controversial one in overtime over in Perth. Now, Melbourne have Perth come to town. Melbourne. I love Melbourne. You know, Melbourne United, they got that, get, that great game night presentation. Casper Ware is as clutch as you can possibly get. They've got a fantastic, super talented team. They got a great crowd. They do everything well there, and I, I, think, I think they're the best team in the competition. I, that's crazy to say because Perth are so good, but I think Melbourne United, they're going for the big thing which is a championship at the end. So you got Perth beating Sydney at home, Melbourne beating Perth at home. 1 to 10 or 11 plus? 1 to 10. 
a close one on Monday night. We moved to the WNBL game of the week, and that is also huge. We saw Perth lose this week. We also saw the Melbourne Boomers lose. Canberra hosting Perth. Mariana Tolo's back in Perth. A very, very good, but in that one, a close one. I think Canberra are going to get it done with Tolo coming back in the year. Uh, UC Capitals looking really good, so I'm going to go Canberra Capitals there, 1-10 to 10 over the Perth Lynx. Steve, we're moving to some NBA. Now, the NBA, Houston, Friday lunchtime our time, Houston hosting the LA Lakers. All right. Well, Houston's terrible. This is simple as that. And the Lakers, that's my team right there. They got some young guys that are hooping. They got LeBron James, LA Lakers, and it's going to be 1 to 10 because they're on the road. That's a guy from California. I should have known who you're going for there. Now, this one's big. Our guy, Deli, he's been traded from Milwaukee to Cleveland. Cleveland hosts Milwaukee. That's Saturday lunchtime our time. They love Delhi there. He's their working class type of guy. They love him. He's Australian. He works hard. He's an overachiever. It's going to be inspirational. They're going to welcome him there. The place is going to go crazy, and it's going to get Cleveland over the line. Cleveland, 10 plus. Ooh, Cleveland getting it done against the Greek freak. I like it. Big call. Denver hosting Oklahoma City. Denver have been great this year. Saturday afternoon, our time. Denver, I think it's got something to do with the color of their uniforms. They just kind of push you to sleep, put you to sleep with all those pastels going with <laughs> light blue and a little bit of gold. But they can hoop. They got some white boys that can go. Oh yeah, the big white boy. What's his name? Jokic or something like that. Jokic. Jokic. Whatever. White Nicola. boy can go. As a matter of fact, all those European white guys in the league, they make it a truly international league. And I love the Nuggets because he's a great passer and they can get it out and they can score some points. They're exciting. Yeah, speaking of Euro guys, shout out to Luka Doncic. Absolutely tearing up for Dallas. But we've got uh, Denver in that game at margin. 1 yeah. to 10, 11 plus. I'll just say 1 to 10. 1 yeah. to 10. Because I got a little sidetracked and I kind of <laughs> forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> I don't mind it either. Sunday morning our time, Detroit hosting uh, my beloved Boston Celtics. All right. You know, the Celtics, I was drafted by the Boston Celtics in 1984. They cut me. So, you know what? I got them to lose. <laughs> Detroit losing. 11 plus. <laughs> Detroit by 11 plus. Just a little bit of personal involvement there. <laughs> Maybe just gamble responsibly. Uh, and Cleveland... Yeah, take your green shoes. <laughs> Cleveland hosting Philadelphia Monday morning our time. Little uh, Aussie rivalry back in action there. Delhi versus Ben Simmons. I know. I got to go with Ben Simmons. You know, it's exciting basketball. Those guys are a little up and down, but Ben Simmons running the break. They get a lot of transition hoops. And, uh, you know, Embiid, God, he's a force. You know, so I got to go with Philly. Philadelphia 76 is getting that one. 1 to 10, 11 plus. 11 plus. 11 plus, according to Mr. Magic Steve Carfino. And that for this week is the Unibet Game Preview. We move down to the starting five. This is where we go the five hottest topics from basketball around the globe, Steve, and we put you on the shot clock to answer each one. 24 seconds for your thoughts. First of all, let's kick it off with our man Delhi, traded from Milwaukee to Cleveland. They play each other. Uh, coming up this uh, right. week on Saturday lunchtime, our time. My time starts now. Yeah. Oh, what a great trade for Delhi. What a great trade for the Cleveland Cavaliers. This guy wasn't playing. Delhi wasn't playing in. Where, where's that Milwaukee. terrible city? Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Milwaukee. He wasn't so playing, got... <laughs> but also he can't. <laughs> Oh, they keep rolling. Yeah. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, it's not the first time I've ever made a mistake like that. I'm, I'm, I'm almost on 20 seconds. Great trade. He's still rich. He's playing where he wants to go. They love him in Cleveland. And great, 24 seconds. And great for the Boomers as well. He gets to go back home and get some court time. He'll be uh, laughing in the Boomers when it comes to uh, leading up to the World Cup. It'll be great. Might get to play some more minutes. So happy days for Delhi. Happy days for the Boomers. We move into the Adelaide 36s. And they bring in Demetrius Conga, but only two and two since his arrival. Not quite gelling. Well, you know, Adelaide weren't gelling. They've, there's been a number of years where Adelaide didn't gel. There's been a number of years where Joey Wright coaches and his team, they don't gel early because you know why? Joey is a prick to play for. I mean, I don't know how you could put You could talk to his players. They love him. He's a great guy to play for. Towards the end of the season, middle of the season, they get on a roll just like they did last year. They're invincible. They attack. They're amazing. They play for their coach. They're accountable. But in the early stages, he's a prick. And those guys know it. A little army style training. Uh, Joey putting all the 36s under a hammer. And we move on to Cairns. Now 1 and 10, lost 9 in a row. How many games do Cairns win the rest of this season? 
Well, I think that they had their shot real early to have a good season. Not a great season. I don't think they have the personnel for a great season, but a good season. They lost some close games, and I just didn't think that they had the resilience or the confidence to go on and win and bounce back. I think they're only going to win three games. Three. I don't know. I'm not, my math isn't great, but three wins and a whole lot of losses. Three, and you've tipped New Zealand against them this week, so you're saying it's not this week that they get that three. Three wins for the Taipans for the rest of the season. On a low for far north Queensland to uh, you know, south Queensland and the Bullets, Lamar Patterson absolutely killing it with the Bullets getting over Melbourne on, uh, on the Saturday night, 33 points, 11 of 14 field goals. Well, I didn't like this guy early, but, you know, then again, I didn't like Jacob Wiley. I thought he was going to get sent home. <laughs> was that the dumbest thing anybody said all year long? Uh, I'll put my hand up for that one. But Patterson, I thought he was out of shape. I didn't know if he looked interested. Sometimes guys go over here and they think they're too good for this league. I should be in the NBA. I should be making, you know, a million dollars a year in Europe. But that is not the case. This guy can play. He loves to play. He does it within the structure of the team. When he's hot, his teammates get it to him. Brisbane are starting to really get on a roll here and it's exciting basketball in Bris Vegas baby now filming Monday night so we don't know how the game went Monday but new input coming for Brisbane and Lamar Patterson rolling it's all happening finally last one for us on the starting five the WNBL we see Mariano Tolo make a comeback from her second knee injury press conference after the game Paul Goris tears emotional that coach player relationship known her since he was 12 your favorite coach your best coach story Steve well my favorite coach no doubt hands down is Lou Olson played for him at the University of Iowa before he moved on to the University of Arizona and he'll be one of the top five coaches ever to coach in college basketball over in America so you know but you know uh, good players you know that that are passionate and love the game they tend to be the coach's pet I was the coach's pet Steve Kerr was a coach's pet as a matter of fact his daughter Christy Olson said that me and Steve Kerr was two favorite players of all time mm, made two great broadcasters as well that is the starting five for this week Everyone's favourite segment is Crunch Time by Alcatel. Now, Shane couldn't join us here at throwbackstore.com.au tonight, but he's out in the road getting crunch time. And this week, Steve, he's got Cam Tregar. You know, the most amazing thing about Cam Tregar is is how much... No, no, no. How much he is punching above his weight. His wife is gorgeous. I don't know how he did it. (laughs) Maybe he'll share about that and a few other things. Here's Cam Tregar on Crunch Time by Alcatel. Welcome to Scrunch Time and, uh, well, Crunch Time, but we'll call it Scrunch Time, depending on our next guest, a superstar and uh, one of the best commentators we've got in the NBL, Cam Trigar. Trigger, welcome aboard, pal. Having time. Hey. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how you go, mate, all right? First one, fold a scrunch. Mate, I'm OCD, I'm a folder. Good on you. So, so you should be. Uh, pineapple on a pizza? Absolutely. Yeah, like Hawaiian all day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely with you. Yeah. Head nodding that way. You confused me. I was about to say, because you look like a pineapple uh, eater. Uh, toughest MBL opponent? It was Galen Young. Uh, I couldn't get by him with quickness and I couldn't big boy him with strongness. He was, yeah, played with the Crocs and the Wildcats. I uh, didn't know what to do with him. Biggest tight ass you ever played with? Oh, crikey. Other than myself. Um, you can nominate yourself. The clocks are uh, yeah, no not myself. I wouldn't shout if a shark bit me. <laughs> Favourite NBA player? Uh, LeBron James or Hal the King. Yep. Um, who's the hardest partier you ever played with? Yeah. Who went harder than anyone else? Were they? Okay with a shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were they? Yeah, crack. All right, good on him. Uh, first NBL player you would start a team with? Anyone from the NBL you got a chance to pick? I'm starting with Bryce Cotton. Sorry, uh, boring answer. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, who would you go with, Daly or Paddy Mills to start an NBL team with? Uh, Paddy Mills just on his uh, shot making ability. Uh, Ingles or Baines? Oh. That's In, a tough yeah, one. It's brutal. Baines would bully our league, but Joe's Joe. And in, Baines got that engine. Uh, Joe, so crafty. Uh, Exum or Bolden? I don't know much about Bolden's and a little bit. Ceiling's high. Right now, I'm excellent. Who wins one on one, Blanchfield or Newley? 2018, Todd Blanchfield wins. Uh, Froling or Kick It? 2018, Froling wins. Patterson or Ware? Ware. Okay, uh, who's got the <laughs> the most red nose? Ronald McDonald or Bruce Palmer? <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a dead set tie. 
Uh, and whose hair would you rather wear, mine or Craig Muller's? <laughs> you would look great both. Mate, uh, so I've got a big head already, so imagine strapping Craig Muller's hair the way to mine it. on yours? Mate, my neck would be killing me with the dreads. Give me the hammer time. Yeah. Good on you, mate. Thanks for joining us. Legend, mate. Well, obviously, that's how Cam landed his wife. Just a funny man. Everyone loves someone that makes them laugh. That's right. You know, you got to have a sense of humor. You know, there's three things you can't be if you want to have a good-looking woman. You can't be old, fat, not funny, and bald. Sorry, mate. <laughs> That's four anyway. <laughs> That's all we got time for this week. I'm not wrapping up because you called me or bald, broke. Or broke. There's there's more than three things actually. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a shiny head anyway. Hey, as we're wrapping up tonight, a big shout out to Delhi. That's huge. It's not every day we see a big Australian traded in the NBA. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check find it on social media the reception they gave him at Cleveland, and also Steve, we're looking at Delhi's YouTube channel before. How good was that insight Delhi gave about his trade? All right, just great insight. I've always wanted to know what goes through the player's head when they get traded. They have to move their family to a city take their kids and put them in another school i know they're rich but it's very difficult to uproot your family like that just on a moment's notice it was great insight yeah three to four minutes delhi just telling you how it is and what we all love about delhi he just pulls out his old number eight jersey stuck a number one on there saying all the fans at home you don't need to buy a new jersey just the aussie battler style just stick a number one on there a bit of gaffer tape and you've got a new delhi jersey number 18 he's wearing in cleveland a big thank you to you joining us tonight steve appreciate you having me along oh man it's a lot of fun it's always good having you here thank you to Alcatel thank you to Unibet thank you to uh, News Corp and uh, the Daily Telegraph and also throwbackstore.com.au a couple more weeks before Christmas but I don't know if I'll see you Merry Christmas to you oh thanks a lot I don't think I'll be getting anything from Joey though <laughs> <laughs> and also thank you for joining us that is I'm Nathan Strimple and that is the basketball show for this week